Welcome to The Real Money Show, the number 18778silver and the website guildhallwealth.com. My name is Jeremy Wiseman. I'm joined by Jerry Karaya. We were already all hot and bothered in the office talking about what we were going to discuss on the show this week. But one of the big things that we're going to discuss just a little bit later in the show is the roasting that's happening at the World Economic Forum in Davos and that the tide is really changing and it's time to be emboldened and start. Uh, we're going to be going through some turmoil over the next year or so. There's no doubt about it. We're going to cover the economic side of things as we're seeing it. But uh, there's a lot to be excited with as just as an example. Uh, Jerry, I saw Yuval Harari. I think I might have sent you the clip. This guy's talking about, oh, man, if, if Trump gets elected, it's the end of the new world order. And I'm thinking, is who who's not excited by that? <laughs> <laughs> right. But uh, but let's talk about the week that was this was a week where the precious metals looked to be under pressure. I, I believe that was because someone from the Fed came out to walk back all of Jerome Powell's comments. And at the end of the day, this is all just talk, right? What difference does it make if interest rates are up or down? The, debt, the debt's been, been put into the system. It's too much debt. It's only going to become more and more expensive to service. You reach a point where you've added too much debt that servicing it, even if you have low interest rates, is not going to help the situation. I think from this standpoint, we're also looking at the fact that the Fed is going to reverse quantitative tightening, which has put them into a loss position. That's right. We've said it on the show before. It bears repeating. If you did not know, the Federal Reserve is losing billions of dollars. That's with a B for billion for bat crazy, um, completely unsustainable. And when all is said and done and the dust settles, gold and silver will be standing and they will be worth a lot of money. I was listening to a podcast this week. This uh, gentleman was describing manipulation in the market because, as you know, Jerry, that's one of the complaints. Well, I don't want to get involved in this market because it's manipulated. And the fact is, is every market's been manipulated as long as there's been central banks. And there are massive distortions in the market distortions to the point where people are believing things that don't have any value have value. Mm -hmm. And at some point, it's going to swing the other way. And I liked what he said. He said, it, and it, it, this is what we've talked about before. It's not about what, it, what the price is. It doesn't necessarily matter where the price of silver goes or where the price of gold goes, but what it buys you. And in the end, this gentleman was saying, I'll, I'll grab his name uh, after the break, that an ounce of gold will buy you uh, a very good car, and an ounce of silver will buy you two two iPhones. That was his his estimation, and I and I said to you, Jerry, "Wow, a hundred ounce bar of silver will buy you two hundred iPhones. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of money. Imagine a thousand. That's two thousand iPhones. If you drove up with a van with two thousand iPhones in it, you'd be thinking, I've, I'm printing money." With all, with everything that that could buy you, or what you could make by selling that many phones, right? To open up flea market stand. It's pretty crazy. So, look, the prices of the metals—they're in and around the 200-day moving average, which is always a great place to be getting involved in the market. And here we are, just sort of entering RSP time. Great time to be making your contribution. Do not pay that tax to this government of any government, because what are they doing for you? Right. Are they improving the healthcare system? No. Are they improving the roads? No. Are they uh, improving your life in any way? Mm, no. Are they raising taxes on you? Oh, yes. So, and they can print money. They can print money. They've already printed the money. They've already spent the money of your great, 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 great grandkids. Okay. And for what? Is your life better? No. Don't give them the money. Put it into your RSP, your registered account. Defer the taxes. Yes, don't worry. You don't want to pay them now. You do not want to pay those now. Defer. Put it into gold and silver. We're going to talk about the gains. If you've held, so if you've held gold for the last 20 years, you're up over 400%. That's over 20% a year. This is what happens when you hold gold and silver long term. If you, have a mil if you can take 100000 and turn it into a million, you'll be happy to pay the taxes. <laughs> okay? Yes, you'll be paying more taxes, but stake yourself. Give yourself the money in the RSP. Stake yourself the money. Don't give the taxes to the government. Give it to yourself. Stake yourself the money. Own some physical gold and silver. It's not 
the whole thing you should have in your portfolio, but it's certainly a great insurance, uh, great insurance to have in your portfolio. And so at Guildhall, we help clients to own actual physical gold and silver in their RSPs, in their TFSAs, Liras, Lifts, RIFs. They own it directly. It's stored at Brinks outside the banking system. Real asset. You're not investing in anything. You own it. You own an asset, an asset that's been around for thousands of years. It is trust when there is no trust. And we're in a, in a world where there is so much turmoil, you want the safety that these hard assets can bring. Jerry, your thoughts on the RSPs? The RSP, this is the way to not pay the government tax, to pay yourself first. The cost of living, the cost of business is going to continue to rise. The inflation lie narrative is being dismantled. It has lasted for far too long to the point where the people are just being gaslit. When the government tells us that the inf rate of inflation CPI is 3 to 4%, and when we look at John William Shadow government statistics, the analysis behind government econ economic reporting, he has reported inflation to be 12%. The cost of living is not inflation, and inflation number is not the cost of living. We're being lied to, and the gaslighting must end. And this is just one way of doing it, because to really appreciate when we talk about insurance, we're insuring against the loss of purchasing power, of anything denominated in a worthless currency. To appreciate that, how precious metals preserve purchasing power is here through the Ibbots and Associates against inflation. Consider that in 1971, a compact car cost you about $2,300. Today, the price of a compact car may be around $40,000, $35,000, A starter home was $24,000. Today, it's roughly maybe 800000 As for gold, back then it was $35 an ounce. Today, $2,050, $2,030 US per ounce. And this is where gold is going to be hanging around. The support level has been established at around $2,000. And silver is going to be bouncing around this level. The silver to gold ratio is a screaming buy at 90 to 1. Guys, this is the time to get to load up your RSPs with physical silver, physical gold in your RSPs, to not just position yourself to protect and insure your wealth, because this is wealth insurance for what is coming. And what is coming, it's coming fast. Because the planners who are planning our currencies have lost control. But you're going to be positioning for the super cycle in precious metals, which has begun 2015 it started and where we're at today we have tremendous topside potential ahead the number one eight seven seven eight silver and the website guildhallwealth.com jerry i just did a quick little calculation while you were talking about that and you said that a starter home in 1971 was twenty five thousand dollars so i took that and i divided it by 35 just to find out how many ounces of, of gold did you need to buy a house a starter home in 1971 and it was 685 ounces and if we take that today at $2,000 an ounce, which we are above that, and we're certainly well above that in Canadian dollars, we'd be looking at, at uh, $1,371,000. So it's a great example of showing how gold has kept up with inflation, how gold continues to, to keep its purchasing power. And if you're looking at, in these times, a uh, return on of your wealth, not necessarily return on it. Gold is going to do that. But let's talk about what happens when everybody realizes that the debt markets are collapsing, when everybody realizes that debt is collapsing and everything is getting worse. You know, I was telling my colleague, one of our colleagues yesterday, Jerry, that um, when we used to do financing and there would be collateral calls, it could always get worse. You, you never knew when it was over until the market had already had already moved much higher, right? So when do you know when a pullback in the market is over? When it's already reversed and it's reaching new levels and then pulling back from those new levels that don't go way down to those lows again, mm -hmm. right? That's when you know it's over. Higher lows, yeah. That's yeah, higher lows, thank you. But it, it, you need that reverse, a much higher move up, a pullback, and you kind of say, well, we didn't pull back to that low again, so we didn't bounce off the bottom. We're at a new, we're seeing the higher lows. Yeah, create some comfort. So, so it's not over until things have really turned around to, to the upside. And 
So when we look at inflation right now and they're saying to you, oh, you know, it's getting better, blah, blah, blah. There is nothing. I'm not trying to be dark about all this, but there's nothing to say that in food inflation doesn't get worse. You know, that what's happening in the Middle East, right? They're having a, they're having a, they're not even insuring um, su supply tankers anymore. They're yeah. saying, some of them, they're saying, we won't even insure you. Others, the insurance has gone from 0.1 to 1%. Oh. That's massive. That's sustainable. Correct. Right? So it could get a lot worse from the energy side of things. And so that could be massively inflationary. The Fed could, could go from quantitative tightening to quantitative easing. That's inflationary. That's before they decide to drop rates, if they drop rates. So it could get a lot worse. So don't think that this is over and that we're hoping, well, they might drop rates and we're back to normal. There's no back to normal. That's like the end of the pandemic. Did we go back to normal? No, we did not go back mm -hmm. to normal. We went to this, what we're experiencing now. We keep getting further and further away from normal. How do we stop the madness? Well, realize what reality is, realize what debt is, and realize what real money is, and get some of that in your portfolio. And what we're saying is do it, do it today in your registered account. And if you don't want to put it in your RSP, think about the TFSA. I think you can put up to $90,000 in the TFSA. Give us a call. We'll show you how to do it. The number, one eight seven seven eight silver The website, guildhallwealth.com. Roasting at the World Economic Forum, coming up next on The Real Money Show on 640 Toronto. Welcome back to The Real Money Show. The number, one eight seven seven eight silver The website, guildhallwealth.com. My name is Jeremy Wiseman. I'm joined by Jerry Karaya. We're talking about physical gold, physical silver. The prices look honestly, Jerry, they look fantastic right now. Premiums have come down a little bit. And I just think that people are sleepwalking into the next crisis. And that if they knew what we knew, they would be hammering this market right now to get in. We would be out of, we would be out of product. And, he, and just to talk about that for just a second here, how many times have we seen the retail market get zapped? Really quickly too. Really quickly. We've, we've seen it probably three, four times in the last few years, Yeah. right? There was March 2020. We had the uh, closing of bank accounts that really scared the bejesus out of people. There Still was does. the uh, Silicon Valley Bank issue. We've had several. Uh, we, and then we had uh, Silver Squeeze, right? Back in, when was that? 2020. Was that 2020 as well? Yeah. No, that was 2021. 2021. So literally almost every year we're seeing something. And here's what happens, guys. Here's what's going to happen. You're going to see the price of silver skyrocket overnight. And you're going to say, now's the time I want to get in. I think I'd like to start with a box of, of 10 ounce bars because I feel like I want liquidity. And I think five, 50 10 ounce bars is going to suit me just fine. And you're going to call up your local dealer because it might not be Guildhall. Maybe you're going to someone else and that's totally fine. As long as it's LBMA approved. Just remember that. Just makes it easier for liquidity down the road. Globally recognized. And you're going to go to your local retailer and they are going to be, uh, if they are not already out of 10 ounce bars, uh, they're going to be rationing them. Sorry, you can't buy a full case, right? Maybe the, maybe, maybe you'll be able to sell a case to someone, Jerry, and Paul will yell at you. How are you selling that <laughs> one right. case to that one client? How do you do that? You know, blah, blah, blah. Fine. I've got one. I'll drive to the vault. <laughs> but on the whole, they're going to be gone. That's yeah. it. Gone. Maples, they'll be sold, gone. And then what will happen is it'll be three weeks, four weeks to get delivery. And then it will be two, two months to get delivery. And then it'll be three months from your local dealer to get a delivery. And they can't, they shouldn't even be selling it to you if it's going to take three months to get it. That's right. right. Um, we don't do that. Um, and especially when you're new to the market, who wants to outlay 10, 20, 30, 50, 100, Three hundred thousand dollars, knowing that you're not going to get product for three months, it's just not going to happen. And this time around, I truly believe this time when we crack thirty, it's it. That's it. They can't tamp it down after that. It's going to go. It's going to go hard, and you won't be able to get in, and there won't be product to get. So you're going to miss out on fifteen, twenty, twenty-five dollar move before you even get your hands on some physical for the first time. That's what we're headed towards. So when we say that you're not going to be able to get physical product in your hand, that's what we're talking about. 
So you want to be savvy about this. Now, one of the problems that I do also see, not a problem per se, but a natural inclination is that you want to make a change and you're thinking all in on these changes. But we don't want you to go all in. Just crawl, walk, run. Start small. Get your feet wet. Maybe move over that abandoned Lira account or locked in RSP account that you've had for 10 years that the advisor's been moving it from one fund to another and you've made nothing. Maybe use that to go buy your precious metals and see how that goes. And then the next step will, will reveal itself. Right. So the point here is that it is going to get worse. Inflation's going to get worse. The market's going to wor get worse. We're sleepwalking into the next black swan event and crisis. And when that happens, the gold and silver market are going to take off like crazy. Now, can you afford to wait for that light on your, on your gas tank to go off now? When you know that there is a gas crisis mm -hmm. and you know that the gas station might not have any, you do not want to wait in this time. This is the time where you do not want to wait. And here's, here's another thing to think about when I'm telling you not to wait for that moment. And it's better to be a month early than a day late. And it's better to get it at these prices than wait till it's at $50 till you finally believe that the prices are going up because you can do your research now. Right? And don't worry about being called a conspiracy theorist. That's what they called people who they want to disparage them from thinking for themselves. Don't be a collectivist. Think for yourself. Right now, the metal is being drawn off all the exchanges and going east because they know what's happening. They know what's going to happen and they're going to be in control of the markets. The prices are going to be set potentially in Asia. And it looks like they're setting up for that. And there's a reason why gold is $100 more expensive there than here. So you can keep trying to, trying to manipulate the price. But if the price of gold, as an example, was $35 an ounce and the U.S. had printed all this money for the Vietnam War, there's a reason. There's a reason why Charles de Gaulle said, send me the gold. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I know how much it's worth. I know how much it's worth against the dollar. And we'll go into that. We'll talk about that. Right. We in just a minute. At the time, yeah. Don't wait. Don't wait. The prices are great. The premiums are great. This is the perfect time. Put it into an RSP. Don't send the taxes to the government. Send it to yourself. Buy, buy while it's cheap. Silver's coming out of the ground at just under $20 an ounce, okay? You are headed into a major crisis just on the supply side alone. Mm -hmm. it, can, it can't get better than this. That's it. That's, no, my, that's, is, my, that's it. That's, I'll the, stop. It's the perfect setup right now. And if you don't have a safe haven um, amidst all of the things that are going on in the world today, when we have these leaders meeting, um, when we have inflation going to continue to run amok. We see things happening in Argentina where they're now hyperinflating, G20 nations hyperinflating. These are re negative realities that we cannot avoid. And for sure, you know, there are, you know, there are other important areas in life that we have to take care of, food and power and energy. We, why Guildhall, why we focus primarily on why physical precious metals? No, you can't eat it. But when we have central planners who are losing control, when we had the original central planners who said at once, give me the power to create the nation's money and I don't care who makes its laws. This is why we're very adamant and focusing on real money because the central planners know I can control a mass of people to do something just by controlling the money. And the money that they have been controlling and trying to dissuade people against has been physical safe havens like physical precious metals. And what a better way to segue into the central bank focus when we have all of these leaders supporting each other at Davos this week, Jeremy. This was an amazing, amazing well, Now they're like, hu they seem like they're huddling and crying together this year. But yeah, go ahead. <laughs> that's right. That's right. We were following uh, some really good reporting from, from Rebel News. Um, you know, as they flew there, most of these these guys are now flying in. They're they're extinguished, distinguished guests, all at Davos, talking about how they're going to shape the global agenda for our tomorrow, folks. Folks, they're 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 trying to navigate and they're trying to wiggle their way, and to ultimately control the money. And they have central bankers there. They have the Austrian central banker saying, "Guys, we're not going to be cutting interest rates at all." Okay, this is what this Austrian central planner is saying. The European central bank is sort of echoing the same. So they're supporting the narrative that, hey, we're not going to be as 
as adamant to cut interest rates. Yeah, they're not going to be as accommodative as as Jerome Powell's dovish statements implied. So, so as as expected, you know, we saw the dollar pick up and precious metals wavering, but gold is is calling the bluff. Gold is is resting just above two two thousand dollars. But amidst all of that, all of the excitement in Davos and all of the worry about disease X and this twenty times stronger virus that we have to be ready about, fearful about. Not really. Isn't it amazing that they have a disease they've called X, which is basically, it, that's like, what should we call this? I don't know. I don't have a name for it yet. Well, let's just call it X. Marks the spot. Exactly. <laughs> like, what, can you tell us a little bit more? Have you created this thing already? How, you know, where is it? What's the lab it's coming from? How do you know it's coming? Like, if you don't know it's coming, how do you know it's coming? Mm -hmm. Unless you've created it. Like, you maniacal James Bond villains, right? Well, nothing spells to me, nothing spells panic more than launching, launching these attacks left, right, and center. They're losing control, and that, that is what's happening. The BRIC nations are not there. They're not showing their support here. There's a clear divide, a bipolarization that's happened. We have the BRIC nations that are leading the way, and these, the, the old guard are now meeting, talking about how they're going to control our money. And over the years, we've heard the creation and fears about central banking and central bank digital currencies. But over the week, there's been just been this amazing smell, Jeremy. It just smells amazing. This roasting that's been going on at the WEF. Well, we had Argentina's president, Javier Mille. He just delivered a crushing address at the World Economic Forum. I don't know why they invited the guy in the first place. He's been adamant against central banks. Because he's, he's a member. He paid to be a member. Well, he paid mistake. to go there and, and give his own thoughts. Well, his thoughts were just astounding. He cautioned this week against the growing influence of these collectivist ideologies in the Western world, specifically the World Economic Forum. He recently elect he was the recently elected economist, and he warned that a shift towards socialism could result in a widespread poverty. And he used Argentina's economic struggles, the hyperinflation over the past century as a clear example. In his speech, Millet advocated the free market capitalism as a solution to prosperity. He emphasized capitalism, which has propelled the modern, modern world to freedom, wealth, peace, prosperity. That's not they want to, they didn't want to hear that at the WEF. They didn't want to promote that whatsoever. But he also highlighted libertarian ideals, market, free market capitalism, and the manipulation, it emphasized the importance of private property, free markets, competition, division of labor, and social cooperation. Now, private property, that kind of contradicts what Klaus Schwab initially said. You will, you will own nothing? And be happy. Not, not apparently, not they, at all. They were hoping it would all just be digital, right? That you'd live in the, live in the metaverse. No, it's, it, it's interesting to see. You should, I don't know if you've ever read the essay series, Prussiagate, but it's an incredible series by by Will Zoll, and it just kind of tracks the germination of how Prussia um, infiltrated from within, and you can see how the World Economic Forum is basically part of that um, part of that system. So it's it's ironic to have someone who's talking about free market capitalism to the heart of the subversive. Um, World Economic Forum exactly. and and all of their, um, you know, uh, what do you call it? The, the puppet the, strings. Yeah, the strings that they put out. So uh, that was one. Great to see them. Uh, great to see them uh, roasting there. Another one was a big, big surprise. Was Jamie Dimon? Mm -hmm. Now Jamie Dimon is this guy who, you know, being in the silver and gold market, we we tend to vilify him, and uh, I think rightly so. He's the head of J.P. Morgan. How much, how much trouble has J.P. Morgan gotten away with and paid fines for over the years? Um, it, it's incredible all of the, the economic damage that they've done and control the, the, the gold and silver market. We don't know who their client is. Their client China is their client the U.S. We don't know what's happening behind the scenes. You mentioned strings. We don't really know how those strings pull. But we know that he cashed out or was about to cash out a lot of money from from his shares so he sees something coming and it seems like he picked out a number that was how do I pull out a small number of shares but that's a great amount of money for me to make me comfortable right because I can't pull it all out it will give the game away but taking out anything gives the game away 
So his, his thoughts at the World Economic Forum were very interesting. And we're going to talk about them on the other side of the break. Oh. The number, one eight seven seven eight silver The website, guildhallwealth.com. Think about owning some physical precious metals. We are just getting started in the bull market. Get in at the ground floor. Get in while the getting's good. Get in while you can get some physical in your portfolio, like the RSP, where it's fully allocated, fully segregated. You own it directly. It's held in a vault outside the banking system, but it's in your registered account. An incredible vehicle. Call us. We'll tell you all about it. Again, the number one eight seven seven eight silver and the website guildhallwealth.com. More to come. Real Money Show. 640 Toronto. Welcome back to The Real Money Show. The number one eight seven seven eight silver and the website guildhallwealth.com. Yeah, that's right. We're catching up with what's happening in Davos. And there's just a lot of uh, the sense that I get. I've been following Kevin Fernandez 82 uh, on Instagram. Great follow. He's been doing tracking amazing stuff with what's going on at Davos. And there's just this sense of, of oh, man. If Trump gets in, it's the end of the global world order. And I'm thinking, who's who's upset about that? <laughs> if that was if that was really the case. And you know, of course he also came out this week and and, and promised that he would not let a central bank digital currency ever happen in the United States if elected. And of course, in Canada, they even though polling shows that no one was interested in that, I don't know, maybe they maybe Canadians looked at the Arrive Can app and said, Well, man, I don't want the government if the government can't get this together, maybe I don't want them in control of my money hook, line, and sinker either. Nobody nobody wants it. There is exactly. no public mandate for a, a central bank digital currency, and yet they went ahead and I think they copyrighted or trademarked Canadian uh, currency or whatever it was, digital currency. It. Okay, fine, guys, you do whatever you want. We can we can vote with our we can vote with our money. Some people want to vote with uh, cryptocurrencies. We can vote with physical gold and physical silver. I know that if I had to put my entire net worth into something, I would have no problem putting my entire net worth into gold because it's been so steady over over 20, 30, 40 years. And I'm just so comfortable with it. You know, I've bought at the top of the market. Who hasn't bought at the top of the market? But I don't put all my money in at the top of the market. That's just part of, you know, okay, so I bought some at the top, right? But if you're waiting and you're making the final decision to put in a lot of money and you waited until that point, what about all of the time during, else during a run? I, I had one of our colleagues, Jerry, was talking to a client and they said, well, market hasn't moved since since I was almost going to buy in in 2011. I'm thinking, so this client didn't think to buy in in 2010 or 9 or 8 or 7 or 6 or cost average. It was all or nothing in 2011. I mean, if you want to cherry pick that as a reason not to buy in, you got me. Mm -hmm. Don't do it. Well, we have some new buyers as well for the first time, <laughs> younger buyers who are buying for the first time and it's $2,000 an ounce. They didn't have the opportunity like this gentleman that this person had when gold was around a thousand twelve hundred bucks well and and you could also say from a nominal perspective what's two thousand dollars against the debts back then versus two thousand dollars versus the debts today gold and silver tremendously undervalued compared to those things 34 trillion plus in debt they're adding like a trillion dollars a month every two three months or something it's crazy what's the global debt Way past $3 trillion. What's the debt to GDP? You cannot pay it back. It's over. It's endgame, guys. You have to start realizing it's over. There's no thinking about, oh, maybe maybe they'll, they'll loosen rates and we'll get back to normal. It's over. You've got to think for yourself and start to say, no one's going to save me. No one's going to save me on this. I hope policy changes, et cetera, et cetera. That will be great. But in an endgame situation... What is it going to look like? Start thinking of extremes. And if you are prepared for those extremes, are you prepared for bank shutdowns, bank holidays? Are you prepared for markets to be frozen? Are you prepared for a 50% pullback in the market? What amazes me, and I'm no, I'm no investment expert, Jerry, but people just seem to never want to take profit if they've made a ton of money. Or people are so want instant gratification that they can't wait five years to see something go up, right? Gold is not much different than the stock market. You say if you buy in and you, you stick with what you have and you hold it for a long time because you believe in it, 
And if you start to not believe in it, look at the fundamentals. And if anything's changed, fine. But if nothing's changed, then stick with the fundamentals. And maybe that's just me. And we're not advisors. We're not giving advice here. I'm just talking about myself. I sometimes wonder why people put more emphasis on instant gratification. And at the end of the day, you're starting from a place of 10, 15% holdings anyway in precious metals. So how does all of that work? Anyway, let's talk about Jamie Dimon. So let's do it. So I think the, the hosts were expecting him to come out and parrot the normal sort of things. But uh, reporting from um, CNBC, Jamie Dimon, the JP Morgan Chase CEO, was praising the former President Donald Trump's positions on the economy, taxes, and immigration. And he was admonishing Democrats to be more respectful towards the former president's supporters or risk hurting Democrat reelection bids. <laughs> I was shocked when he said this, by the way. Being Epstein's banker, I was like, wow. He came out and said this. It's At Davos, in Davos. Uh, and, and maybe it's because, perhaps, and I know I'm stretching here, but maybe it's potentially that socialist ideologies ultimately have caused economic ruin. And from an existential standpoint, it means the the end of his bank, mm -hmm. right? So if he wants profit, what's going to make his bank the most profitable? Free market capitalism. That's right. Not socialism. Yeah, he'll make money off of off of debts. But at the end of the day, how do you get the bank to keep making money? Mm -hmm. So maybe he's thinking long term. And how do we protect against this? And but just b before we go to break, I'm sorry, we'll continue it on the other side that there was another um, analyst, I can't think of his name, but he was saying, look, this guy's not a not um, a Davos guy. These guys want full control, one world government. They don't want this guy's bank. He he runs counter to them. So it maybe potentially at some point the enemy of my enemy is my friend. Maybe he's aligned with with uh the MAGA movement because he's sitting there going, I don't want these guys one world government. That's not gonna help my bank. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Think about it. Think that's about what, it. It's over. not gonna help his America, and that's uh, that's probably what he's more 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 focused on, but that's just why we, we at Guildhall, we pop the popcorn. This is an amazing show to watch. And once you're positioned in metals, you're safe. You have your haven. You can watch this show in peace, knowing that gold and silver are going to be there, will be here. It will be into the next system and beyond. So get your precious metals with Guildhall. Give us a call anytime, and we'll be back right after these messages. You're listening to The Real Money Show on AM640. Welcome back to The Real Money Show, the number one eight seven seven eight silver the website, guildhallwealth.com. Man, uh, our listeners are lucky that we keep this to 45 minutes because we could probably turn this into a three-hour show every week, <laughs> which would be bad for all of us. Let's just try to keep it rolling here. Um, we we want to get into some stuff about Bretton Woods very quickly, uh, but I I just was talking to you, Jerry, before, at the break, mentioning that uh, the Federal Reserve uh, was became under the control of the U.S. Treasury back in 2020, something kind of interesting. Um, there was also comment this past week on the campaign trail from uh, Trump saying that uh, currencies, the U.S., China, and Japan currencies would soon be on a level playing field. What do you make of that? What does that mean, level playing field? How, how do we get back to a level playing field for U.S. dollar, the Chinese mm -hmm. yuan, and the Japanese yen? The timing of that is just amazing. Just looking back 80 years, this is in 2024. 80 years ago, um, it was Bretton Woods uh, that, that, that occurred in 1944, and a part of Bretton Woods was creating uh, not parity between currencies, which what some people who know about Nasera Jacera talk about is, is parity with all of the various currencies, whereas Bretton Woods was a, a band of about 1% swings between currencies and that is an alarming quote to to be said 80 years post Bretton Woods knowing that these guys are meeting in Davos this year many of whom are part of the central banking system World Bank IMF and who are just here to figure out a new way to manipulate the world economy to their ideals and advantages meanwhile the global shift such as China and US uh, are moving in a different direction along with the BRIC nations but uh, it's a really fascinating quote. 
Well, I think the pendulum swings. I think we're good, we're starting to see that action happening, and we're seeing another pendulum swinging as well in Texas, who are making strides towards reconst. We've talked about on the show about the refinancialization of gold and silver, and Texas is is looking to um, reconstitutionalize money which is physical gold and silver. In a major way, over the last year, year and a half, there's been bills that have been passed, the Gold Standard Restoration Act, uh, states like Vermont looking to remove the sales tax, even capital gains tax, because you can't tax money. And right now, states are moving towards gold once again. It's a huge one, not just the BRIC nations, Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa. You know, what if what if Russia moved to a gold and silver currency? How would that affect the world and influence their allies? Well, if Texas was a country, it would be the eighth largest global economy in nominal GDP. That exceeds us, Canada, Australia, and even Russia. That's how large Texas is. And this is a conservative hub, an economic powerhouse that has been taking a major interest in gold and has just taken another step towards embracing gold and silver. Texas voters in March will be voting on ballot propositions. What that is is one standout of the proposition is to create a program that allows access to the state's precious metals depository that was created in 2018. The access would be for Texans to use the depository's gold and silver as legal tender. And any U.S. state using gold and silver should not be a surprise since it is law. Like according to Article 1, Section 10, clause, was, clause, clause, clause 1 of the U.S. Constitution, it says, No state shall enter into any treaty, alliance, or confederation, grant letters of marque and reprisal, coin money, emit bills of credit, make anything but gold and silver coin a tender in payment of debts. So this is it. Gold and silver are money. It is lawful. This is why it's a safe haven. And this is one step towards the refinancialization of gold and silver because if the adoption happens with a tech with a state as large as Texas compared to other countries, this is a this is gonna adopt this is gonna cause the entire country to adopt it um, nationally. It will cause countries to face the music, such as Canada. We are a major trading partner if not the biggest trading partner with the U.S., and we will have to resort back to the gold standard as well or adopt the republic's money. We don't know exactly what what direction this is going to take, but to know that adoption of gold is happening in March is going to be, is going to be huge. And at the end of the day, look, this is just shows you how big the stakes are. Central banking, Davos crew against real money, constitutional money that can't be taxed and power to the people. Now, you can try to control the market, but you can't control nature. It is going to override you eventually, and that's what we're seeing every day. We're seeing the banks mathematically, right? Trust the math, right, Cherry? Trust the math. Trust the science. Mathematically, they've reached their conclusion. They've reached their end. The only thing they have left, just like in a bad breakup, is to say, well, if you walk out that door, you'll never see me again. <laughs> well, we don't care. It's over. We don't need to see you ever again. See ya. Right? So all they have now is empty threats. Whoa, well, if, if, if this happens, it's the end of the global order. Well, who cares? Your we don't want global. the global That's order. Right. I don't want to pay taxes on money borrowed from the Federal Reserve anymore. As uh, Rep- Representative Ron Paul stated once, we ought not to tax money. And that's a good idea. It makes no sense to tax money. You cannot tax money. It's gold and silver. And paper is not money. It's fraud, is what he said. And those were statements that were given at a testimony which led to Arizona removing capital gains taxes on gold and silver. These are major moves that are happening through the adoption. And it just takes one ounce at a time, folks. One ounce at a time to remove those physical ounces in your coffers, whether it be inside the depository, in your own possession. But this is the way to recapture your freedom, recapture your your generational wealth for your future generations. Yes, they have used our future generations to pay themselves over and over again. Our grandkids, our great-grandkids, that ends here, and that ends with physical precious metals. 
And imagine the wealth transfer that's going to happen when there's only 2 billion ounces of silver above ground and not everybody has access to that, right? What's going to happen when you're trying to fit an elephant into a mouse when even 1% of the population decides, holy crap, I need to get physical precious metals in my portfolio. I need to get it in my possession. And you go to the local dealer and they don't have coins available. They don't have 10 ounce bars available. You need to get in before that all happens. You need to be ahead of the curve. You don't want to wait till everything happens and say, oh my gosh, I need my toilet paper. Mm -hmm. But that day's coming again, it's right? Here. So we want to make sure that, that the wealth transfer, you're prepared for it. And you're not in late to the party. And this looks like a really good time. So be counterintuitive here. Think about some of the things we've been saying. Do your own research. We believe holding it in a registered account is a great way to go. Have it physically allocated to you, segregated from all other holdings. You own it directly. You can go and visit the product. That's right. If you can't hold it, you don't own it. There's the litmus test. Go there. Go audit your product. You can hold it in your hand. It's held in a bank, in a vault facility, a, a vault outside the banking system, which is perfect because there could be bail-ins. We never, you know, that is in the system. And uh, listen, thanks for joining us this week. It's been a, a crazy, fun, fast ride. Can't wait to see the thumbnail we're putting up on YouTube. Wait till you see that. And if you've missed a show, check us out on YouTube. And we're posting stuff on X. We're putting out some great, great uh, articles that we're seeing throughout the week on X. So, you know, YouTube, X, check out our show. It's been a lot of fun. It's going to be a lot of fun for the rest of the year. Of course, get in now. That's exactly. all. That's it. Jerry, thank you so much. Thank you. So much fun. And thank you to all the listeners for joining us here on The Real Money Show on 640 Toronto.